One of the core three main science topics, that being biology, chemistry, and physics. I'd say that the latter probably is the least removed from what people generally associate with planetaria, that being, of course, astronomy. And being the least removed out of those three, this video in the series will probably be the least difficult to discuss when it comes to how to utilize planetarium for topics other than just looking at the stars and the constellations flying through space. Because at the end of the day, physics is the way that we understand the natural world on its most fundamental of levels, all the way from the quantum scale to the cosmological scale. Anyway, if this is your first time meeting me, my name is Ariel. I've been working in the planetarium industry for nearly half a decade now and was first inspired to become an astrophysicist from attending my own local planetarium in elementary school. And I've come to realize with the advent of modern technology that planetariums are adept at, use, at being utilized in all types of different situations, not just astronomy and not even just science. And this video series is an attempt to illustrate and give some more ideas on how those different topics can be taught utilizing the planetarium as a teaching tool. In addition to that, I've also been a private tutor since 2018. And even though I work with a wide cornucopia of different types of students, the primary topic that I focus on has been physics. And since the vast majority of my students study that topic, it's allowed me to really get a better fundamental understanding of how the topic of physics and its various um, subgroups are taught at various different levels, from high school to university and for different age ranges, from middle to young teenagers to even small elementary school students, and of course to adult learners as well. So, uh there's a real sense of intuitiveness for me when it comes to physics that I don't think would have been possible for anyone who either never took the subject in school or only studied physics for one or two semesters because they were told they had to for their college major or to graduate high school or something like that. I've seen these classes taught and essentially have retaken a lot of these classes multiple times over multiple years and only through that from both teaching it and learning it formally have those topics been able to sink in and so the reason i bring that up is because i understand that physics isn't easy for people to wrap their heads around but after teaching it long enough to a wide variety of different people it's sort of become easier for me to be able to translate those complicated topics into more digestible bite-sized pieces, so to speak. And so uh, with that in mind, uh, instead of like the previous videos where I had a pretty firm fundamental understanding of topics being biology and chemistry and then topics I'll discuss later on in the future, physics is my wheelhouse. And since it's my bread and butter in that sense, I'm actually going to structure this video a little bit differently, focusing on how physics is taught in terms of subject from beginning to end, and then sprinkling in ways that planetariums can be used for those various topics. In general, since physics is probably one of the easiest and safest uh, scientific topics to experiment with, like to do uh, for to have students do labs with, I should say, there won't be as much of a need to explain topics in a more um, concrete sense. And thus, a planetarium, I think, would be best utilized for more abstract scales that you wouldn't do in uh, a conventional class. So in other words, anything that can explode or would be something, say, on cosmic scales that um, you would look at, such as orbiting of planets and moons in a solar system, or the collision of galaxies, or something like uh, nuclear fusion, or 
looking at how an atomic bomb works. Basically, anything that you would today teach in a classroom through a video presentation uh, that you couldn't show your students directly with a general experiment uh, would be the best way to utilize planetarium, in my opinion, for physics. So um, what are some examples? Well, for physics one, most students start off with mechanics, classical mechanics, which would involve topics including kinematics, how objects move through space, uh, momentum, energy, topics such as perhaps wave phenomena, so science of sound and how uh, waves interact, say, if you were to drop um, a pebble in a pool of water, how would those um, waves ripple out throughout the medium? And then depending on where you uh, go to school, you might talk about things like circular motion, simple harmonic motion, working with springs, very common. And so uh, a great way to use the planetarium as an asset for those uh, introductory classes would be again showing how we utilize those concepts on industrial scales. There's a classic example of uh, the Newtonian bowling ball or can ball, whatever way that they teach it in your school, where you demonstrate orbit and how if an object is moving fast enough, it will continue to fall perpetually around a spherical object like a planet, and that's how orbit works. So if you say had a baseball, handball, whatever object, projectile you want, and you shoot it out, uh, it would probably fall back to Earth until you reach a specific velocity where it's continuously falling and it never touches the ground. And that is how orbit works. So being able to do a demonstration like that would be very easy in a large theater setting. And then of course, um, relating back to um, just how planets move, the difference between circular orbits and elliptical orbits, teaching about Kepler's laws and how those apply to Newtonian gravity and the interconnection between those. Um, very, very simple to do. And just like I discussed with chemistry in regard to being able to see multiple different shapes of molecules side by side with something like wave phenomena, seeing multiple diffraction patterns, seeing the difference between reflection, demonstrating total internal reflection, which was uh, a big part of the light and laser lab that we used to do in planetariums that I've worked at. Being able to see those on a large screen side by side, as opposed to, um, or in addition to, I should say, doing an actual lab with water, watching ripple effects on a wave of water, seeing diffraction patterns from lasers and light, just being able to see them in a different context and um, in tandem with one another be another great way to enforce learning those topics for uh, physics students. Physics too, and uh, as and by extension electromagnetism, it's kind of where it gets a little bit more fun for um, different creative ideas you could use a planetarium for when it comes to teaching those subjects, since electricity can be quite hazardous for uh, people's health. You don't want to mess around with high voltage uh, equipment too much without proper training. So being able to see different effects of how objects interact, how moving electric fields can generate magnetic fields, vice versa, demonstrating how we get electricity through Faraday's law, all types of things like that um, in three-dimensional moving patterns, seeing how basically just watching uh, more interactive videos that we can, again, pause and stop and fast forward and cut to suit the teacher's needs for that particular class. All of those things um, would probably be a lot more fun to see in a theater setting than on a flat screen in a classroom, uh, especially because it's not practical for a lot of schools to go to, say for example, a nuclear power plant to see a Tesla coil. Um, they might not have access to those learning tools. And so being able to see them in real time would I think be a very powerful way of teaching those concepts and how they apply uh, to everyday life. And then, of course, if you're talking about electricity and magnetism, it's only natural, since we're in a planetarium, to discuss 
Earth's magnetic field, where those um, dynamic effects come from plants, why some objects have magnetic fields, some don't, comparing them to objects like stars, which can have extremely, let's say, um, bad, volatile magnetic systems, uh, how solar flares happen, the interactions between matter and uh, electromagnetic radiation, why things like uh, greenhouse effects happen and how that has to do with the way that matter interacts with certain wavelengths of light than the electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, and all of those different things you can connect to topics such as anatomy, we're talking about waves, why you can only hear certain frequencies of sound, why you can only see certain uh, frequencies of light, and just interweaving how physics uh, affects us in everyday life with a slightly more grandiose perspective that you can only get from a full dome theater. And that basically covers everything that the average physics student would learn about. Even if you were to go up to a university scale, uh, a lot of folks like myself, for example, I had to retake physics one and two, even though I already took them in high school. And that was totally fine because again, it takes some time and repetition to really learn and understand these concepts, especially with all of the mathematics interwoven. And if, whether you're doing only algebra-based, graduate up to calculus-based physics, or if you're a physics major, then you would be looking more uh, in the realm of higher level calculus, linear algebra, uh, differential equations, and those are all things that you could perhaps introduce in a more conceptual manner through a visual medium like a planetarium for people that would be interesting in pursuing those topics. But they're just more in-depth versions of what a lot of folks cover in their basic physics one and two classes. And so we could certainly go more in depth. Obviously, it's a subject that I uh, have quite a bit of experience in. So if you were to ever visit the planetarium and I was there, that would be something I'd be happy to discuss with students. That'd be very easy to do. Um, and then, of course, on top of that, having the input of regular physics teachers um, would be just another um, added bonus to that learning experience for students, I believe. So that's where I'll end up, I think, for this particular subject. And that more or less covers, like I said, the big major umbrella science topics that people learn prior to university. And so moving forward, I think that I'm going to start discussing slightly more abstract topics in regard to what you would expect a planetarium to do. And so I'm going to be discussing quite a eclectic variety of different topics, including language, literature, history, business, economics, all types of different fields that you wouldn't necessarily associate with a planetarium, but that a facility like that could be used in order to help teach and educate not only students, but anyone who's interested in those topics. Because again, as I've said before, planetarium is essentially just screen. It happens to be a hemisphere, so it's more immersive, more interactive. You can um, control it for, in the same way that you would be able to control a video game. And you can play video games on player planetarium as well as uh, just a slight um, aside. So you can do anything in planetarium, and I plan on discussing all of those different avenues in coming videos. So look forward to that. If you have any other ideas about physics in particular, please feel free to leave a comment sharing your own ideas of how you could use planetarium to teach physics specifically, or whatever field that you happen to be an expert in. and um, definitely brainstorm and share your ideas with the community as well. All that said, uh, thanks for taking the time to chat with me uh, a little bit and look forward to the next video in coming days. Thanks and take care.